today. Hey, so what we're going to do now is we're going to play um, a Nutcracker quiz. And I'm going to send you the link for this if you want to play it on your own. We'll do it one time together. And then if you want to do it on your own, cool. Now, one thing in this quiz they're going to ask about divertisements. This word right here. Okay. This is how it sounds. Divertisement. Divertisement. And a divertisement is a short dance in a ballet. So do you remember the divertisements in the Nutcracker? When Clara and the prince went to the land of sweets? Do you remember the chocolate dance? The chocolate Spanish dance? That was one divertisement. And then the coffee Arabian dance. And then the next divertisement was the Chinese tea dance. And then the next one was the Russian candy cane dance, the tray pack. And then they had the dance of the toy flutes. I don't really remember the last two or the clown dance, but I do remember the chocolate Spanish dance and the Arabian coffee dance and the Chinese tea dance and the Russian tray pack dance. Okay? So when, it, when they talk about in this quiz, what's a divertisement? Now we know. Sound good? Say yes. Okay, let's get into this thing. All right, we're going to go through it together, and this is the link I sent you. Um, it's free. All you might have to do is just say, uh, this is my email address or something like that, but it's all free. Okay, so we're going to play this quiz. Are you nervous? Mm-hmm, <laughs> me too. All right, here we go. True or false, in Act 1 of the Nutcracker, Clara experiences her house and toys growing around you. Do you remember when she fell asleep after the party and everything started growing? We're going to say true. Yes. Nailed it. All right, question two. In what act one scene would you see the king mouse and the nutcracker fighting the land of snow did they fight in the party scene did they fight in the land of sweets or did they fight in the battle scene battle scene makes sense right you fight in a battle scene true or false in act two of the nutcracker there's a divertisement that represents canada well, we saw Spain, Arabia, China, Russia. Didn't see Canada. I'm going to say false. Oh! All right. In what country was the first performance of the Nutcracker? The USA, Russia, Spain, or France? I remember this from one of the first slides we saw about the Nutcracker. Say Russia. Oh! Oh, look at that cute bunny. Who is the composer of the ballet The Nutcracker? Marius Petipa, Peter Tchaikovsky, Mikhail Baryshnikov, Alexander Dumas. I remember this from a slide. Tchaikovsky. We got a power up if we need it. Double jeopardy. Get double the points, but a wrong answer will cost you. Okay. Let's do double jeopardy here. In what land does Clara experience dancing snowflakes? The battle scene? The land of sweets? The land of snow? The party scene? Snowflakes? Land of snow. Who is this character in the Nutcracker? He's the uncle of the main character. Clara's uncle is that Herr Stelbaum, Drosselmeyer, Fritz, the Nutcracker. You remember the guy who made the Nutcrackers? Drosselmeyer. All right. The Nutcracker centers around what holiday? Thanksgiving, Christmas, 
Halloween or Labor Day. The Nutcracker centers around, yep, Christmas. Who breaks Clara's Nutcracker during the party scene? Fritz, Drosselmeyer, the King Mouse, or Herr Stelbaum? Do you remember this? When Fritz was jealous, Clara's brother, and he pulled on it and it broke. Fritz! Ooh, power up. Eliminate one incorrect option. All right, we'll try that one. How many acts are in the full production? One, two, or three. Now, I think it was the party scene and then the land of snow and sweet scenes. I think there was two. Boom. Who is the antagonist? That's the bad guy. Who's the bad guy in the Nutcracker? The Nutcracker, the King Mouse, Drosselmeyer, or the Sugar Plum Fairy? The bad one was the King Mouse. How old is the ballet, The Nutcracker? Is it 10 years old, 25 years old, it's a premiere that's brand new, or over 100 years old? If you remember, it's really old, right? Over 100 years. Who does Clara's life-size Nutcracker turn into? Does the Nutcracker turn into Harry Stelbaum? Does the Nutcracker turn into the Prince? Does the Nutcracker turn into the Harlequin? Or does the Nutcracker turn into Drosselmeyer? The Nutcracker turns into the Prince. Mm. Oh, another power up. Mm. <coughs> Immunity, get a second chance after a wrong answer. This would be a picture of the two child main characters in the Nutcracker. Who are they? Is this Clara and Fritz, Sugar Plum and Fritz, Sugar Plum and her Cavalier, Clara and Drosselmeyer, Clara and Fritz. Final answer. True or false, the main character of the Nutcracker is the Sugar Plum Fairy. Mm, maybe? I thought the main character was Clara. So I'm going to say false. Traditionally, the Nutcracker takes place in Germany. I'm going to use our immunity here. I'm going to say false. Oh, I was wrong, but we get one more chance. True. Because we had immunity power up. This is fun, you guys. The divertisement in Act 2 of the Nutcracker represents different countries and different countries and colors, countries and kings, countries and time periods, countries and sweets well it was the land of sweets I'm going with sweets remember the chocolate and the candy canes and the marzipan ooh power up we get to eliminate one wrong answer cool what does Clara throw at the most does she throw her nightgown her slipper or an ornament now, it depends on which version we looked at, but in one version, she did throw her slipper, if you remember that. Boom, boom, boom. Who is the leader of the Land of Sweets? Clara, the Sugar Plum Fairy, the Dewdrop Fairy, or the Snow Queen? I'm thinking Sugar Plum Fairy. What do you think? Should I? Oh, I wasn't sure on that one. 
All right, last question, friends. True or false, in Act 2 of the Nutcracker, there's a divertisement that represents Africa. Well, we saw Spain, Russia, China, Arabia. I don't remember seeing in Africa. Hey, we did good. Did you like that game? I look, really liked it. So what I'm Hey friends, this instrument is called a baritone or a euphonium. Now remember yesterday we talked about a trombone and we said a trombone is a brass instrument. This is a brass instrument, right? You can tell by the material it's made out of. And this has valves in it. Okay. And it's not a tuba. Tubas are bigger than baritones or euphoniums. And later on, you're going to see a giant, giant tuba. But this is a baritone, and it sounds like this. So I hold it like this. And I have a stuck valve here, and I'll show you that when I'm done here. And you hear that stuck valve? That's because this is stuck. So if you open these up, take this out, this is what's inside. That's called a valve. And the valve directs which way the air is flowing. Okay. And then there's a spring in the bottom in here. So when I push the valve down, it pops back up. Now this one needs to be oiled so it might not be popping up the way it's supposed to. So I put it back in and then I screw it back down. bit of a stick there but the do you get the idea so this is a baritone and these are the valves also these come out okay you can pull these out and you can pull these out and you can pull these out and they just slide in and out and if you slide them out the pitch will lower in the baritone because now the instrument's a little bit longer and if you push it in the pitch will raise a little bit because it's a little bit shorter and this down here when you're blowing through this remember yesterday in the trombone we said you had to be able to go <laughs> and then go <laughs> well there's going to be moisture that's coming out of your mouth right and then it's going to be going through the instrument so down here, these are called spit valves, okay? And when you open these up, you may get spit that comes out. Or you can open up one of these valves, and you can empty your spit out of that too, okay? So the next thing I'm going to show you is a tuba is bigger than a baritone, but I'm going to show you a giant tuba. I hope you like that. What you do with a tuba like this? It's a conversation starter. It's something that you walk by and you say, wow, look at that giant tuba. Something to really get people into the store. The tuba has been with Carl Fisher since its origin in about 1900. First in the store in the Lower East Side, then in the store at Cooper Square, starting about 1926. Um, then we moved to 1999 to Bleecker Street. In 2013, we moved to the Financial District. Well, when I walked in and saw the tuba for the first time, I was speechless. I immediately wanted to play it. It kind of sounds like a jackhammer, like, yeah. a block away. 
it's not playable like a regular tuba where it can play a chromatic scale but if it looks like a duck and quacks like a duck it's a duck you can play fundamental tones on it but i think that's the fundamental of the horn you think I think that's the problem. It is not a normal tuba. It doesn't actually have any pistons and valves. It can only play the fundamental pitches, which would be one, five. I'm checking to see if it is the world's biggest bugle. I've emailed and been in contact with the world, Guinness Book of World Records. I haven't heard back yet. A bell on a normal tuba is around 18, 19 inches. This one's just about 41 inches, so it's much, much larger than your average tuba. <laughs> Tubas and orchestras typically weigh about 30 to 35 pounds. The big tuba probably weighs easily over 100 pounds. It takes a good set of ears to be able to hear the notes because they're so low. It, it sounds like a helicopter on there, but... It's so low. You have fewer notes you can play because it takes so much more air to play this large instrument. I would say it would take at least four lungs. In the right set of lungs, it could sound gorgeous. Hey, fifth grade. So what we want to do is we want to um, learn a new song today. And this one is A, E, F, and G, okay? So first of all, we got to figure out where is the A, where's the E, where's the F, and where's the G. And so what I like to do is find out where the D is first. And the way that I told you guys this last year was look for the doghouse. Wherever you see just two together, then you see the D in the middle. Kind of like makes Snoopy's doghouse. Right? So here's kind of Snoopy's doghouse. Right here. Right? You got one here, one here, one in the middle. Kind of makes that little doghouse shape. So that's what we want to do here. This is the doghouse. So we know D is here. If we know D is here, that makes this E. And that makes this F. Mm hmm. And that makes this G, right? This is G right here. Now remember in music, we only go up to G and then we start over. So next is, yes, A. And we don't need the D, we're not using it in this song. So I just wanted this as a point of reference so you know, if you know where the doghouse is, you can start kind of counting from there. Okay. So we know the E is here. Come on, Johnson. And the F is here. And the G is here. And the A is here. All right? So this song's going to go A, A, E, E, F, F, G, G. So it starts on the top. Then it goes down the bottom. And then right up the ladder. That's level one, one note. So go find a piano. Find your A and your E and your F and your G. All right, here we go. One, two, level one.
Cool, come on back. Or get in a spot where you can see and hear me. Now we're going to go to level two. So remember, we always skip. So the A chord is going to be here. So here's level one for A. Here's level two for A. All right. Let's go down to the E. Skip one in the middle. Come on, Johnson. Skip one in the middle. So now here's level one. Here's level two. All right. Let's look at the F. We skip one. We add a note there. Here's level one so far. Here's level two. Last note is the G with that chord. So we come to here. I'm going to put all these up here so we can kind of see them all. All right. Here's level one. Level two. Okay, so why don't you go find a piano and let's do level two. One, two, three, four, level two. Here we go. All right, come on up or get in a spot where you can see in here. All right, let's go to level three. So the A is here, skip one here, skip one here. So this is our A minor. All right. Level one. Level two. Level three. All right, so now we go from A down to the F or I'm sorry, to the E minor. So we play, skip, play, skip, play. All right, level one. Level two. Level three. All right, now we go to the F. Play this one, skip this one, play this one, skip this one, play that one. Level one so far. Level two. Level three. Last one is the G major chord. Play this one, skip this one, play this one, skip this one, play that one. Level one so far. Hey, what happens if all you can do is play level one? Who cares? Sounds great. Here's level two. Here's level three. All right, let's get on a piano and let's try this. One, two, three, four, level three. Ready, go.
Cool. Come on up or get into a spot where you can see and hear me because now we're going to chord chord and we're starting in level one. And you can see the chords here. It's A minor, E minor, F and G. Okay. Sounds like this. Just like what we're doing. Here we go. Level one. Here we go. Let's try level two. Here we go. So now it's time for the song. Does it matter if you play in level one, two, or three? Nope. You play, you do you and uh, figure it out. Um, I'll just throw some fingers up here so you know if I'm playing in level one or level two or level three, but it doesn't matter. So you just do you, just kind of get into the rhythm of the song and see how you do. Okay. So I'm going to switch over here. I hope you like this song, song, song. All right, here we go. I'm going to start in one. Now and then, I think about me now and who I could have been. And then I picture all the perfect that we lived. Till I cut the strings on your tiny violin. Oh, my God. 
You know there were so, there were some chords like uh, three fourths of the way through the song. I didn't even know that they were in there, but that was cool. Uh, maybe next time I'll show you how to play some of those chords too. All right. Hopefully you had fun, friends. Hey, fifth graders. Hey, um, we're going to the song that we just played. Okay. We're going to make on Song Maker right now. So if you need your Chromebooks, go ahead and pause me. Um, go get your Chromebooks. Um, headphones if you want them. And then unpause. And I'll keep going. Unpause. Okay, so this is what you need to know. So when you open up SongMaker, and I put the link on the bottom of this YouTube video, okay? So you can put that up there and, and copy that. Or you can go right to SongMaker, just Google up um, Chrome Lab SongMaker. Chrome Music Lab SongMaker. Then I'm just going to click on how we set this thing up. I don't like that one. I like the one I had before. So we need this for our settings. We need 2, 4, 2, major, middle, C, 2. So we need 2, 4, 2, major, middle, C, 2. Okay. Isn't that weird? Like it looks different, like it did before. I don't know why that is. Let me try that one more time here. I'm gonna go go Chrome Lab Song Maker. Click on Song Maker here. Yeah, it did the same thing. That's all right. All right. So remember, it should go two four two. Major, middle, C, two. So I'm going to go two, 
four two major middle C two. Okay. So this is our song. Yours might look different. Yours might look smaller like this one. That's fine. For whatever reason, I don't know. They just kind of appear different. But the first thing we have to do is our first chord is A minor. So we have to find this note. Bum, bum, bum. And it's... There it is right there. It's this kind of purple one right here. So we go, and we're going to make a chord on here just like we do on our pianos. So we go purple, skip, red, skip, yellow. So that's the first A minor chord. Okay? I'm going to turn that up a little bit. Maybe we can hear it. So here we go. Okay, that seems to match. So we do the same thing here. So we sound like this now. All right. Now our next chord is the E minor. It's this one down here. And we skip, play, skip, play. And then we do that here. So our song goes like this. On Chrome Lab, it goes like this. Okay. Now remember on the piano, we go from E up to F, which is just one slide up. So I think we go, just slide it up one. Yep. This one, skip. Play that one, skip, and do that again. So now, when I play it on the piano, it goes. And then on Chrome Lab, it goes. And then all we have to do is go from that F up one to the G. Skip, skip, do it again. Skip, skip, and we should have this. And Chrome Lab says, okay, and then you can change it around, different sounds. Add some drums in here. Like this. pretty cool and if you want to even play more you can go into settings and add another octave so you can add more notes up here okay so go ahead and play around and I'm going to save this and send you a finished copy that I made in an unfinished copy okay have fun playing with song maker <laughs>